Compassion uh, actually comes from uh, uh, two Latin words. I, I, I studied Latin at university. Don't ask me why. Um, the the first word is the word for suffering, which means which is patior, a p a t i o r, uh, and it's participle passus, which means suffering. And the con part, obviously, for anyone who knows any Spanish or Italian, is with. So, compassion means suffering with. So to have compassion for someone is to suffer with them what they're suffering with, whether that's pain or grief or addiction or um, poverty or uh, illness or even happiness. You can have compassion for someone's happiness, I suppose. Compassion makes me think of kindness. Um, compassion makes me think of forgiveness, of uh, of empathy, those yes, those are the things. Compassion is kindness, forgiveness, and empathy. Lack of judgment, care, concern. Um, weirdly, I, I had this picture of a woman smiling. I don't know. That's the first thing that comes into my head. Compassion is uh, about understanding. Um, compassion is without ego. Um, if that's possible for actors, <laughs> uh, I don't know. As an actor, uh, to have compassion as an actor is to have compassion for the characters that I play. Uh, that's what it means to me. Um, and that whatever they're going through, whatever their predicaments, um, I have to suffer with them. Um, I have to understand and I have to not judge it. Uh, I have to be forgiving of it. Uh, whether it's a, a circumstance or, or their true nature, um, to have compassion for another human being is, or to have compassion for a character is no different from having compassion for another human being. If you're playing a character, to have compassion for them is, um, is to play them honestly. And so I suppose suffering with them is to suffer their arrogance or their misogyny or their insanity. I think that's why, for example, Iago is as compelling as Romeo, because within all of us there is the capacity to be anyone or anything. And that's the place where compassion comes from, is that understanding that I could be like that if circumstances have been different. Um, there is an Iago and a Romeo within all of us. There is that lover and there is that sociopath. And so to play Romeo, you have to have compassion for his, for his predicament. He's not allowed to marry Juliet, and yes, that's really infuriating um, to the point of um, rebellion and then his, his uh, you know, the, the predicament of Act Five where they're you know, in the coffin together. Um, and to have compassion for Iago is to understand that he, he's, uh, he's damaged, he's hurt. He's hurt by all the other people, all the people in the play that he feels hurt by. And, um, and that extends to every script I read, uh, to look for, um, you know, to look for the possibility of who that person is in me. Um, and that's compassion. Yeah. That's it. Well, the man has such an enormous imagination, that's the thing. Uh, and that's the pleasure of working with him, is that there's no question as an actor that you can ask him that he doesn't have an answer to because there's such rigor in his dreams. You know, he's constru he constructs these completely cohesive worlds. Um, and in this sense, it's, a, it's, a, it's the world of the sort of pre-Victorian era. Um, so it's a period world, England. Um, who has his own particular energy and mystery, and they fall in love and they go back. A man who's been defined by the actions of his past. Um, and just, I think, entering entering into that world with Guillermo because there's such complexity and richness and, I mean, it looks so beautiful, this film. It's maybe one of the most beautiful films I've had the privilege of being in. It looks 
gorgeous. The costume design, the dresses that Mia... Embrace this vision, but you are trying to also remain true to yourself and maybe not get scared in the process. Yeah, I know. I think it's just like, it's always about talking. You know, we talk to each other a lot and we would, we did 75 days um, do, shooting this film and we would, and he's kind of struggling with his own sense of autonomy. He's struggling with, he's trying to be the man he wants to be, but he's stuck being the man he's been made to be by other things and and uh, and Guillermo and I love plotting that out in a way it did became it became very collaborative yeah and finally what scares you <laughs> uh, what scares me I uh, gosh um, I, I'm scared of wasting time I don't know why we all have a very short life and uh, I want to look back on it and feel like I I rang every second out for, for juice and, and, um, and fun. Um, uh, I'm just gonna, I know. Right, you know, I know it's coming at some point, probably when I least expect it. Um, I think the balance sheet's looking okay. Um, emotionally, I mean, never mind all the other stuff. Um, yeah, no, I'm not, I don't generally try, I try not to let fear run the show. It's much more interesting if you let uh, love and fun run the show. It was great. Like, he's off the map mentally. He's, he's, he's completely let go of, <laughs> of normal psychological patterns. Um, and uh, it was great. You know, it was great to work with all these amazing actors. It was great to play, to, to continue th sort of the evolution of the character because he's so fascinating. He's like, Loki is an incarnation of the darkest aspects of of human nature basically he is he is jealousy he's pride and ambition like I think Mark Ruffalo has the best line about him he's like Loki's mind is a box of cats right. <laughs> yeah it was fun it's fun to be a box of cats yeah. it seems like though it always comes back to the brotherhood between Loki and Thor so do yeah. you think there is a chance that Loki could ever turn to the good side yeah I do I don't know when <laughs> but um I think uh, that would be interesting for me is is that's what's interesting about the character is he's constantly kind of dancing on this tightrope um of of the light and the dark because he was born with good instincts and it's in, and all of his his villainy is comes from a kind of a, a betrayal like he just feels like the narrative of his whole life has been a, a, an appalling lie and um so he's kind of heartbroken and, and maybe if someone can actually get through the sort of the leather and the metal and the this sort of shell of, of um, anger that he has that maybe they can like give him a hug. I don't know. <laughs> Shakespeare's poetry is like a labyrinth and it's his verse is so full of twists and turns um, which at first can seem confusing and befuddling and intimidating but if in preparation on your own you've worked out a route from the outside to the center and you know that you have to take this turn and then this turn and then go around the back of this and then come back in this way if you as the actor know the way through the labyrinth you can lead other people faster and with clarity and fun. Do something every day that makes you feel like an actor. Do something every week that makes you feel like an artist. Um, the hardest thing for me when I've been through those moments is to feel that somehow I've got to change or alter myself in some way. But actually the, the, the key thing is to stay true to yourself. Work on that. Work on your own perspective and nurture your own belief and your own viewpoint on life because when the hour comes that's what will be the thing that's needed is your specific point of view your specific artistic fingerprint that nobody else has and so you've got to hold on to that um, and protect it with everything you have i get nervous every time all the time and i think that nerves are actually a crucial part of acting or at least some sense of the body preparing itself to do something unusual, which I think acting is, it's not like a normal thing. And so your body is saying, oh, I think you're about to do something unusual, and that's what nerves are. I read somewhere that, that it's been studied that the chemicals that your body releases when you're nervous are the same chemicals that your body releases when you're excited. 
So when I'm nervous, I remind myself I'm actually excited. Thor Ragnarok. Uh, <laughs> when um, Loki arrives at the end to help. Your savior is here. I remember there was an action sequence. Uh, Idris Elba, who plays Heimdall, and I were side by side, and we had finished. We had choreography planned, and for some reason I finished early, and he hadn't finished. And I thought I better do something, and so I flipped my dagger, and it was improvised and it stayed in the film. My second one is Get Help, which Loki finds humiliating, but I find hilarious.